Aloha, this is Coach Vicki Francois from Christ Visions Ministry of Healing for the Body, Mind, and Soul. Thank you for joining me as we study to keep a healthy soul. Today's class, Change Your Habits, Change Your Life. This is Lesson 2. Let's open in prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us today. Please open our hearts and our minds to understand and absorb all that you have for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, God has a master plan for our lives. He planned out our lives a long, long time ago. He laid out a salvation plan for each and every one of us that fits into His overall plans. It's not in His will that anyone miss out on heaven. It doesn't matter what has happened to us in our past or where we're at in our lives right now. God has a plan for each one of us. And whether you fail or succeed depends on if you follow God's plan and His will for your life. I don't believe that anything happens by chance with God. I believe God brings people into our lives at certain times for specific reasons. As a matter of fact, the reason you're listening to me right now is God's will. Do you know where God is leading you in your life using His plan for you? Do you have it all laid out in your own mind and understand it? Do you even know why you need a plan or have you ever talked to God about it? Well, God's will is that good things happen to us because God has a perfect plan for our lives. It's His will that certain things happen. Look in Romans 8.28. It states that all things work together for good to them that love God. It does not say that everything is good, but that God can take everything, good or bad, that crosses our pathway and cause it to work out to our advantage. Have you ever wondered why God allows suffering in the life of a Christian or if he even arranges it sometimes? Nah, let's go on. God will take the broken, messed up pieces of a ruined, wasted life and use them to build a life that brings honor to his name. That is the ultimate in recycling. Have you ever made the decision to try to do God's perfect will? Not just his permissive will. A lot of the time, God's will can permit us to have our own way. If we insist, even when He has a better way. Unlike a lot of people, God is a gentleman who will not impose His will on us, even when He knows that we're wrong. Now, how do you know when you've made the right decisions about His will for you. Sometimes people chase after things that turn out to be harmful to them because they don't go by the guidance in the Bible. You must start searching the Bible, God's written word. This is where you start. Some things are specifically commanded for us to do or forbidden for us to do. Other things are implied by principle. It's important to seek godly advice, write down all the pros and cons, and study them prayerfully. Use your mind and put all that you discover into your own God-given personal computer, your brain. Always remember, though, that when the Spirit urges you it will never, ever contradict what's in the Bible. It's so important that we know the difference between God's will and our will. Some things are God's will, and some, are, some of them are our own. Our will should always supersede to Him, so that His will can become our own will. One of the big, uh, one of the big, all-time questions is this: 
Why do godly people suffer? Are times of trial God's will? Well, the Apostle Peter discusses this in 1 Peter 1, verses 6 and 7. And I'm going to read out of the NLT. To be truly glad, there's a wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It will bring it is being tested as fire tests to purify as gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it must bring you much praise and honor, glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. His conclusion is that the trial of our faith might be found to praise and honor. He goes on to tell us in 1 Peter 2, 21, For God called you to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered. He suffered for you. He is your example, and you must follow his steps. Jesus left us an example by his suffering. And in 1 Peter 5.10, he asked God that we be made perfect, established, strengthened, and settled. Paul wrote in Romans 5, 3 through 4, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation Israel has had more than its share of testing and suffering over the last 50 years or so it has existed as a modern nation there have been a lot of heroes from among its people one young man was a Jew born in Egypt. He was sent by Israel Intelligence Service first to South America and then on to, on to Syria to gather information about what the military strikes might be planning against Israel. He was able to establish himself as a Syrian businessman so successfully that he was able to become friends with top military and political leaders within the Syrian government. He was taken on a tour of the extremely sensitive area that overlooked modern, uh, excuse me, overlooked northern Israel. And he ended up becoming responsible for planting the shade trees around all of the bunkers. Supposedly, this was to make the bunkers cooler for the Syrian soldiers. However, they also effectively marked where the bunkers were, making them easy targets for the Israelis. During the Six-Day War in 1927, because of those trees identifying where the bunkers were, Israel was able to, be, uh, to take this heavily fortified area within just a few hours. Unfortunately, Eli Kuhn had been caught and publicly, publicly executed two years previously. Nevertheless, his efforts were instrumental in saving the nation of Israel from destruction of the hands of its enemies. Now, was his death a good thing? No, of course not. But we um, did his efforts help accomplish God's purposes for Israel well history gives us a resounding yes on that one God's will for you now you might feel the same way at times torn between two decisions in your spirit you know what to do but sometimes you make wrong decisions Sometimes you choose something that's not God's will because 
the right decisions seem so painful. If we're going to fulfill the will of God, though, we have to walk in the Spirit so we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Matthew 26, verses 36 all the way through 46, and in this one I'm going to tell you out of the New King James Version, it says, Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and said to the disciples, Sit here, while I go over there. And he took with him Peter and Mark, the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptations. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came, and he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them, went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my brother, my betrayer is at hand. And then Galatians 5.16, it says, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. We must understand that our relationship with God <clears throat> is of primary importance. Some people have given up prospective mates even who didn't fit into what they know God's will for their own lives. People lose things like their businesses, their homes, and everything they own because of their own will. It's so important that we surrender our will to Christ. It's the will of God, not ours, that's important. As always, Jesus is our great example in this. Do you think it's God's will for any of us to be sick? Well, I don't believe that it is. Look at what John said in 3 John, first chapter, verse 2. It says, Dear friend, I hope all is well with you and that you are as healthy in your body as you are strong in your spirit. It's God's will that we be blessed because we live in a sick and sinful world. Negative things come into our lives. Sometimes because it's, of our, it, it's because of our own stupid mistakes or things that we do, that we've done. It's our own will, not His. I believe that it's God's will for us to be healthy. It's a benefit that God's promised to us. A truly Christian lifestyle is basically a healthy lifestyle. Most of us refuse to pollute our bodies with things like drugs, alcohol, tobacco. But how many of us use the same care with our eating habits? We seem to forget that we also can dilute and defile our bodies 
by overeating. We are admonished by Paul to treat our bodies with the same respect that we would treat the temple of God. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in you? But if you are sick, <clears throat> excuse me, if you are sick, get your eyes off the sickness and start believing that God will turn things around for you. God wants you to be well. Jesus was so concerned about sickness that he took the stripes for our healing. Look in, an, look in Isaiah 53, 5. It says, But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole, and he was whipped so we could be healed. God promised that he is the Lord who heals. He promised to take sickness from the midst of us. Look in Exodus 23, 25. You must serve only the Lord your God. If you do, here's the if, if you do, I will bless you with food and water and will protect you from illness. God is a God of healing. In Psalms 107.20a, the first part, it says, He sent His word and healed them. God doesn't want to keep His blessings from you. If you're not on the receiving end of blessings, don't blame the devil. Don't blame your spouse or your relatives, not your friends or even your circumstances. The real problem may be your own attitude about God's will for you. What is the will of God in your life? We need to keep the desire for that utmost in our thinking. It is God's will for you to be blessed in every way. You can expect that. You can count on that. If your relationship to God is right, you will get excited. You will have no, oh, if you have, excuse me, no relationship with God, or at the best a shallow one, you're going to end up bailing out the first time your little boat gets leaking it. So get ready today for a great future walking in the will of God. Today I'm going to give you a memory verse. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for the good to them that love God. You can pick your favorite version. But remember, the, this is something to commit to your memory, that everything works together for the good to them that love God. Thank you so much for joining me, and I look forward to next time for Class 3. If you want more classes in between, make sure you visit us at www.christvisions.com and click on the, on the uh, classes page. Mahalo. God bless you. Until next time.